In this video, we are going to look at translating or transforming a parabola. So let's just have a look at the turning point form of a graph to understand what we would do to the equation. Okay, so if I want to vertically translate a graph, it affects the Q. So a vertical translation affects Q. Now, if I want to move up, so if I want to shift the graph up, I'm going to add a value to Q. If I want to shift the graph down, I'm going to subtract a value from Q. Okay, now, if I want to translate the graph horizontally, so do a horizontal shift, it affects the X in, in the bracket. Okay, so for horizontal shifts, if I want to move the graph to the left, okay, I am going to add a value to x in the bracket. So to shift the graph left, add a value to x in the bracket. If I want to shift the graph right, I'm going to subtract a value from x in the bracket. So to shift the graph right, shift, sorry, subtract a value from x in the bracket. Okay, now remember this horizontal translation, it seems counterintuitive because if I look at the x axis, my positive x values are to the right and my negative x values are to the left. But if I want to move to the left, so if I want to move further um, negative, I'm going to be adding a value. If I want to move to the right, so further into the positives, I'm going to be subtracting a value. So here I'm going to add, here I'm going to subtract. So it seems counterintuitive. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here I have the parabola y equals x minus 3 or squared minus 2. Now say I wanted to shift the graph up by 3 units. What that means is that every coordinate on the graph is shifted up 3 units. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, um, this coordinate 1, 2, 3, here 1, 2, 3. Okay, so my new graph shifted up three units would sit there sorry it's not neat it's hard to draw neatly with this okay so it's shifted up by three units so to look at the equation there if i'm shifting up i add to the q value so shifting up three units i'm going to be adding three to the q value so I have y equals x minus 3 all squared minus 2. And now I'm going to add 3 to the q value. So this simplifies to x minus 3 all squared plus 1. That would be the equation of my shifted graph. If I wanted to shift the graph down by 5 units, shifting down by 5 units, Okay, it means every coordinate is going to be shifted down five units. So if we look at the turning point, it's going to go down five, one, two, three, four, five, places it there. Um, this coordinate down one, two, three, four, five, sits there. One, two, three, four, five, there. One, two, three, four, five, there. One, two, three, four, five, there. Okay, so my new graph. has been shifted down five units, so down five, okay? Now, if I'm shifting down, I'm going to be subtracting from the Q value. So now I have Y equals X minus three or squared minus two, and I'm going to subtract five. So that makes my new equation X minus three or squared minus seven. Right, let's look at horizontal translations, okay? 
So let's just highlight our original graph. So just to remember that this is the original graph that we are shifting. Okay. And I'm just going to show a shift in a different color. So green. So if I want to shift this graph, um, say five units to the left. Okay. So I want to move five units left. Okay. So then I'm going to take every coordinate and move it five left. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, let's take this coordinate, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and one up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so if I shift the graph 5 units left, so let's write 5 left, okay, it would sit here. Oh, sorry, terrible drawing. Okay. Now, the equation then, if we have to find the equation, so let's just write shifting five units left, okay? Left and right affects what's in the bracket, okay? So essentially affects what the p-value is, okay? So if I'm moving to the left, I'm going to be adding five units to x in the bracket. So I have y equals x minus 3 or squared minus 2 is what, sorry, I don't want everything, I want to add something in the bracket. So I start off with x minus 3 in the bracket, but I'm moving 5 units left, so I'm going to add 5 to the x in the brackets, that gets squared, and we still have minus 2 as our q value. So this simplifies to x plus 2 squared minus 2. Okay, so I just want to show you that um, if we look at the, um, one way to check whether you've got your equation right is look at what your axis of symmetry would be. Now our axis of symmetry we find by taking what's in the brackets and making it equal to zero, so solving and then solving for x, so I have x equals three. So my original axis of symmetry sits here, x equals 3. Now my shifted graph has x plus 2 in the bracket, okay? So if I were to find its axis of symmetry, it's, let's do it here, x plus 2, I make it equal to 0, and I solve for x, so I have x equals negative 2, which means the axis of symmetry sits at negative 2. And if you wanted to, remember you wanted to shift the graph 5 units left, so you can check, is the distance between x equals 3 and negative 2 5 units to the left? And indeed it is. So that's one way that you could quickly check that you have indeed moved in the right direction, so in the correct direction, by the correct number of units. Okay, let's do a shift to the right. Okay, so let's say we wanted to shift um, 2 units right. Okay, so the red graph is my original graph. Okay, now to shift right, I have to take every coordinate two units right. Okay, so that's my turning point. Take this coordinate two units right, it'll sit there. This coordinate two units right, place it there. This coordinate two units right over there. And one more there. So my shifted graph sits here. Okay, so to find its equation, to shift a graph right, we are going to subtract the number of units from the x in the bracket. So it's going to change our p-value. Okay, so I have y equals, and then x minus 3 is what I originally have in the brackets. But shifting right, I'm going to subtract 2. So I have that squared, and then my q-value is still minus 2. Simplifying that, I have y equals x minus 5 in brackets squared minus 2. Again, check by looking at the axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry would be x minus 5, make it equal to 0, solve for x, and I have x equals 5. So x equals 5. And comparing it to the original graph, which was at x equals 3, I have indeed moved two units to the right. So let's apply this knowledge to typical questions that you might get. 
says give the equation, sorry, let me just change my pen color. Give the equation of the new parabola if the graph of y equals x minus 1 all squared plus 4 is shifted down 5 units. Now we know it's shift down it means we subtract from the q value. So I have y equals x minus 1 all squared plus 4 and I'm going to subtract 5 from the q value. So that gives me a new equation of x minus 1 all squared 4 minus 1, sorry, 4 minus 5 is minus 1. That's my final equation. Question B says, consider the function f of x equals x plus 2 all squared minus 3. Give the equation of g of x if g of x, x is f of x shifted up 10 units. Okay, so to shift up, we're going to add the number of units to q. And our new equation is going to be called g of x. So g of x is our f of x that has been shifted up. So I'm going to add by 10 units. Simplifying this, I have x plus 2 all squared minus 7. Okay, then it says give the equation of h of x, the function of f of x shifted to the left by 3 units. So again, we start back at our f of x. But now we need to shift it to the left by 3 units. Now if I shift to the left, I am adding that many units to x in the bracket. So it changes my p-value. Right, and my new equation is going to be called h of x. So I have x plus 2 originally, but now shifting to the left, I'm going to be adding 3. And then I've squared, and my q is negative 3. Simplifying this, I have x plus 5 in the brackets, all squared, minus 3. Okay, right, so then we look at function notation and understand, we want to understand the transformations that they represent. Okay, so if I have f of x and I'm adding a constant represented by q, Adding a constant to an equation means I am actually adding it to the original q value, which means I have a vertical shift. So if we see this, it means shift the function vertically. Okay, f of x plus p means that if I have say an equation f of x equals 2x plus 1, whatever I have in the bracket, okay, I need to replace, I need to substitute in place of the x. So f of x plus p would become 2, then in place of x I would have x plus p plus the 1. Now we know that if I add or subtract anything to x in the bracket, I am effecting a horizontal shift. So this means shift the function horizontally. Right, then I have f of x equals k. Now what this means is the, it represents the point of intersection between a function and the line y equals k. And we will work more with this when we look at nature of roots and calculations relating to those with regards to parabolas. So this means the point of intersection of, sorry, between a function and the line y equals k. Okay, the next one. If I have k times f of x, k can be replaced with any number. So if I'm multiplying a whole function by that number, it means I'm multiplying every term by it. Okay, so, but f of x can be replaced by y, so essentially it's also just multiplying the y value by k. So multiply the y value by k. If I have f of and then in brackets k of x, 
this k value is multiplied to the x value. So multiply the x value by k. Okay, then if I have f of negative x, okay, if I originally start off with f of x and I'll change it to f of negative x, the sign of x is changing from a positive x to a negative x. Now that happens when we reflect a function over the y-axis. So, sorry, yes, over the y-axis. So this means reflect the graph. Reflect the graph over the y-axis. Okay, and similarly here, if we initially start with f of x and then go to negative f of x, here I have a positive y value and it's going to a negative y value. The sign of y changes when I'm reflecting over the x-axis. So this represents reflect the graph over the x-axis. And it is very important that you understand this terminology, sorry, this notation. So just a few examples, okay. If the function f of x, and it's given to us in the turning point form and the standard form, so if the function f of x equals x plus 2 or squared plus 3 or x squared plus 4x plus 7, determine the new equation if f of x undergoes the following transformations. Shift the graph of f of x down by 10 units. Down, we know we're going to subtract from the q. So I have my new equation, y equals x plus 2 squared plus 3, and I'm subtracting 10. So that becomes x plus 2 or squared minus 7. Then shift the graph, of, not then, but a new transformation. Shift the graph of f of x 4 units to the right. If I'm moving right, I'm going to be subtracting from x. So I have y equals x plus 2, I'm going to be subtracting 4 to shift it 4 units to the right, and then I still have the plus 3. So that simplifies to x minus 2 all squared plus 3. C says replace the value of x with 3x. Okay, so let's do this relative to the standard form. So replacing x means... Um, let's call y, okay, f at 3x. So wherever I have an x, I'm now going to write 3x. Okay, so instead of x squared, I have 3x squared. Plus 4 times instead of x, I have 3x plus 7. And we can simplify this. This becomes 9x squared plus 12x plus 7. Right, D says multiply f of x by 2. So our new equation is going to be 2 times f of x. So I can substitute the equation for f of x in place of f of x here. And let's do this for the standard form. So it's x squared plus 4x plus 7. And get rid of the brackets, I'm left with 2x squared plus 8x plus 14. 